Good evening. We thank the Lord for tonight's talk. A warm welcome from United Evangelical Church of Green Hills. We thank you for joining us. We hope that and pray that everyone is safe and keeping healthy. Our topic tonight is quite timely and it's about anxiety. And our speaker is Dr. Jeanette Uchua. Let us begin our session tonight with a worship song. Let us listen, meditate, and worship on this video. Praise the Lord. Now, Pastor Francis shall lead us in prayer and give some opening remarks. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, talk on anxiety in uncertain times. Indeed, many people are worried about so many things that we do not know what is ahead of us. But don't worry, because our speaker this evening will be giving us something that will comfort each and every one of us. I hope and pray that you will stay tuned until the end and that uh, I welcome all of you for joining us this evening. May the Lord work his hands upon our lives. And so let us come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you because you are faithful in everything. We thank you, Lord, because in plenty or in few, we can find comfort in you. We can find refuge in you. And indeed, you are our fortress. Whenever we are weak, whenever we are worried, whenever we are uh, full of uh, problems and issues in life, we know that we can run to you. And in you, Father, we know there is an answer. And you are the answer. And so, Father, we thank you for this evening. May you lead us, guide us, Lord. I pray for our speaker, uh, Dr. Jeanette uh, Trua, that you be the one to use her as your mouthpiece. I pray for all the people who are tuned in, listening. I pray, Father, that indeed you will touch our hearts, give us comfort and peace, knowing that you are our God. And indeed, as the song says, let us be still and know that you are God. So, Father, Lord, we just want to entrust to you and lift up to you this time, this evening. May you be the one, Lord, to lead all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Francis. Now uh, we will have Brother Jeremy to lead us in the reading of God's Word. Our scripture for today is uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Brother Jeremy. Before we move to the talk proper, uh, please be reminded that uh, later on after the talk, we will allow time for a Q&A. So if you have questions for our speaker, please type them and send them through the Zoom chat box. Or if you're on Facebook, you can type it on the comment section. Our moderator shall collect them and sort them before I read them out to our speaker. The topic of tonight's talk is anxiety in uncertain times. I'm sure most of us here, if, if not all, are anxious about what's happening now and what will happen next. Praise the Lord for providing us our speaker who will help us cope with anxiety. By God's grace, she graduated cum laude from St. Scholastica's College with degrees in psychology and human resources development. She earned a silver medal for her master's in counseling at De La Salle University. She finished her doctor of ministry in marriage and family counseling at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary in the US last 2017. Our speaker's passion for God and counseling is evident as she has been serving as pastor counselor for more than 25 years. 
She previously worked at the Youth Gospel Center, Chiang Kai-shek College, and UECP. She's presently serving God at Makati Gospel Church. During this pandemic, she started her YouTube channel called Adjusting Your Heart, which is available in three languages, Fukien, English, and Filipino. Please note that the word adjusting is spelled without the letter D. So it is A-J-U-S-T-I-N-G. So, so um, feel free to search for the you, her YouTube channel and uh, subscribe. And to know why the word is spelled this way, you have to check out her channel, Adjusting Your Heart. So in the next 30 minutes, we will learn more from someone who is an expert on our topic and a pastor. Would you please welcome Mr. Janet? Ah, I'm sorry. Would you please welcome Dr. Janet Yuchua? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, good evening, everybody, to all the pastors, the leaders of UECG, and of course, to all of your, the members and the friends who are here. So tonight, I'll be talking about anxiety in uncertain times. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. Oh. We now live in very stressful times because of the COVID-19. A lot of us are afraid to go out. Most of us are still working from home. Some people have been laid off. Businesses have closed down. And then a lot of the students have to go online for their studies. And we have interruptions for Wi-Fi. So it's really very stressful right now. And a lot of people are feeling overwhelmed and they feel that they can't go on. That's why this, is, this picture is Justice Secretary, okay, Menardo Guevara. He's asking all the religious leaders to lift the spirits of their respective communities. And I'm glad that UECG is doing this part by having mental health talks like this. And it's very sad when you look at the news, like last June 16, a grade nine student who's only 19 years old from Albay, he committed suicide. Another committed suicide because he said he can't afford to have a laptop or a cell phone vacation and a poor family. So because of this kind of stresses, uh, there are more and more suicide cases. As a counselor, I'm also very sad that I would also have counselors who are like that. Like during this pandemic, people would prefer pe uh, their friends, whoever, uh, whether they're believers or not, I just accept. Okay. And then there was one that I was very sad to hear about because I talked to her and then after talking to her from time to time, I would follow up on her. And then suddenly I was shocked when I saw in Facebook that a lot of people giving their condolences to this person. And then I immediately asked the person who referred her, I said, you better check out on her. And sad, it's so sad that she committed suicide. So right now, I hope that this talk will be more of prevention for all of you. You might not be anxious, but maybe you have friends who are, and I hope that this talk can, can also help you help them. Because anxiety and depression are the, uh, goes hand in hand, and depression is one of the leading causes of suicide. So I'm going to share with you the reasons why people experience anxiety, the symptoms, what's the difference between a clinical and a normal anxiety, and of course, the most important thing, how do we deal with it? How do we overcome? And that's the most important thing. One of the problems, okay, or the causes why people would experience anxiety is because they overthink. They keep on thinking. According to Dr. Alice Boyce, there are two types of overthinking. One is called ruminating. People who mentally replay past events, they keep on thinking about the past. Nagre replay yan, ulit lang siya na ulit. Like, um, naku, I shouldn't have said that. Or, I think I should have done this or done that. Yun, puro mga regrets, okay? And then the second type of worry would be worrying about the future. Just like, look at this picture. Right now, it is normal to feel worried. All of us fear of getting infected. That's why we work from home, di ba? If, we're, if you're not afraid, you won't. You would just go out every day. But we don't because we're afraid of getting infected. Just today, okay, the coronavirus has already afflicted 61.6 million. And there's already 1.44 million deaths all over the world. So that's scary. And in the Philippines alone, we already have 426,770 cases with more than 8,000 deaths. And... I have known people like they, um, one of my uh, 
former disciples, she lost both parents to COVID. In their family, four of them got it. And then uh, the children, they were able to recover, but the parents, sadly, they died. And it's just two weeks apart. So imagine more. It's just this, this. Like, it's 8,000 so, parang baba-baba compared to 1.44. But if one of them is your family member, that's already a lot. Okay? And though right now, there's still no cure. Of course, thank God, uh, there, a vaccine is coming up. But of course, we still don't know the side effects. So, nakakatakot rin, di ba? If you, you're gonna be uh, injected with it, you don't know what's the side effect. So, right now, people ruminate, they worry, okay? That's the two primary reasons why people experience anxiety. Then we're afraid of what will happen in the future. We're afraid of failing. Let's say if you're a student, if you're working, oh, I might lose my job, or oh, my business, or you're afraid of what the new normal would look like. You're afraid that your relationship, your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your marriage won't work out. You're afraid of what the future holds, okay? Like, what, what would I do if I get cancer? Or what if somebody died in my family? Puro what if, okay? So, nakakatakot. And what are some of the symptoms of anxiety? Like, these people, they all, they know the always, they always worry about something. And then sometimes they tremble. Okay, they're afraid of losing control or dying. They have shortness of breath. Okay, they're hyperventilating. They can't sleep well. They have chest pains. They're easily tired, nausea. They're often irritable. They, uh, they feel dizzy. They have difficulty concentrating in their studies or in their work. They feel numbness or tingling, palpitations. Okay, uh -huh. let me put this off. Chills. And then sweating. So these are the common symptoms of people who have anxiety. Let me go on. So I'm going to compare what's normal anxiety versus anxiety disorder. The first one, if you look at the left side, these are all the normal anxiety. When it's normal, it's only occasional, which all of us do. I also sometimes have to, I worry, I worry about my parents. My parents live in Binondo and uh, sad to say, gumapaya ay tao tao. He he still goes out even though he's already seventy seven years old. Lalabas yan. Of course, he would say, "Oh, I'm gonna buy food." Ganon. So I would worry, but what I do, I have to learn how to control my worries. Okay, because it doesn't help. So occasional worry is okay, but if you look at the right side, what's anxiety disorder? It's constant and it's already chronic to the point it disrupts social and work life. People like this. They have to stop schooling. They have to stop working. So, nakakatakot na. So, that's why it's already a disorder. And please, only a psychiatrist or what we call a counseling psychologist can diagnose you. Please do not just Google and say, oh, I have anxiety disorder because these are all the, the things that I have. No, only a psychiatrist can do that. Okay? So, please do not self-diagnose. And let's look on the right side. Normal anxiety, you feel self-conscious in social situations like, Oh, you're going to a party. Oh, do I look good? I'm going on a first date. Will it turn out right? It's normal. But if you look at the other side, if it's anxiety disorder, that person went to the other extreme of avoiding social situations because they're afraid of being humiliated. Okay, so they would just stay home all the time. They won't even go out. And the normal anxiety, you sweat over important events like a job interview. Okay, you're going to get married. You're going to have a baby. Okay, on the other side, there will be repeated panic attacks. When panic attacks, they're hyperventilate. Okay, they can, they really have a hard time breathing and everything. Okay, on the normal side, okay, sometimes after a traumatic event, there's difficulty in sleeping. Take note, this is only from time to time, like you've been robbed, a loved one is hospitalized, things like that. But you will be able to move on. But here, there will be recurring nightmares. Okay. Parang PTSD na ang dating. Like soldiers, rape victims. And on the normal side, there will be a realistic fear of a threatening place or situation. Which in a way, fear is, is also a gift from God. Because when you're afraid, um, if you learn how to deal with it, then you will be able to come out victorious. Let's say there's a fire. Eh, syempre, kung sobra kang chillax, wala kang gagawin, you're not gonna run away from the fire. But if you know, oh, that's a threat, you're gonna run out, right? Or let's say public speaking. Of course, you have to prepare well. Like, I have to prepare for this talk. I just can't uh, say things randomly because I want to give something of value to you and I don't want to waste your time for the thir next 30 minutes, okay? Or let's say, oh, 
oh, oh, you're afraid I'm gonna meet the person who embarrassed me before in public. Nakakatakot naman talaga. But when you look on the other side, the person becomes an OCD. Develops OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, like performing repetitive actions, like they keep on washing hands. Take note that every 10 minutes. By that time, okay, your hands will be very dry and you can't go to work. You can't go to school because every 10 minutes you're, you're washing your hands, okay? And you keep on checking on the doors. So how can you sleep? But you're about to go to sleep. Oh, I think I haven't checked the door. You go back and you go back to and forth. So those people have to stop working. So that's already a disorder, okay? And look at this picture. Every time there's a pickle in my throat, ang tanong niya, ah, is that you, Rona? The coronavirus. Please, do not scare yourself. Worrying lowers our immune system. Okay? And then that, that will be a problem because once your immune system is lower, it's easy for you to catch any virus for that matter. And it paralyzes us from trying new things because you're always worried, you're always fearful, and you cannot achieve your full potential, the potential that God wants us to achieve. And it robs us of the joy of enjoying the present. Because it's either you live in the past, you ruminate, eh? you keep on oh, regret, regret, or you're so afraid of the future. Either way, you're not enjoying the present. And my friends, most of our worries don't happen. So you don't even need to worry. Once you start worrying, don't. You just face the problem when it's there. Let's say you're about afraid of the future, like someone might get cancer. Let's say ako, I might get cancer. Then I'll just worry. I'll just face it when I already have cancer. I'm not going to worry about it now. So I'm going to give you five tips today. First is focus on God. Remember who God is. Yes, we live in a time of pandemic. It seems out of control. So many people dying. But remember who our God is. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. And he's still in control of everything. And best of all, he loves us very much. And that has already been proven by the death and sacrifice of Jesus, his son. So we just focus on him. Whenever you're afraid, focus your eyes above. But you might be wondering, if God is good, and if God is so powerful, how come there's so much pain and suffering and death in this world? Sad to say, it's because of the result of Adam and Eve's sin. Whatever we're facing right now, it's the result of man's sin. When God created the world, it was perfect. It was only when they sinned that pain entered, suffering, death. So having said that, we still don't need to fear because God has given to us the gift of His Word. Please read the Bible every day. And of course, the gift of prayer. God also give, gave us that gift. So let's pray whenever we're anxious. Let's read the Bible. And one thing that would really help, memorize verses about not how not to worry, okay? I'm going to give you some. Like, you can uh, take a screenshot of this or I can share this with Pastor Francis and he can just uh, share the PowerPoint to all of you. Keep calm and don't be afraid. Do not lose heart. That's found in Isaiah verse 4. Another, 1 Peter 5, 7. Cash all your insights on him because he cares for you. Another familiar verse, the one that our uh, uh, presider uh, read for us, do not be anxious about anything because God knows we are going to be anxious. So he said, do not. It's a command. Do not worry. Do not be anxious about anything. And he gave us a solution. What's the solution? But in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then what will happen once we pray, once we give all our concerns to God, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. That's the effect when we really learn how to surrender everything to God. But sometimes the funny thing is people will tell me, Ati, I've prayed no money. How come I'm still worried? I cannot go to sleep. I, I go to sleep by 3 a.m. But see, they keep on thinking. They overthink. I said, because when you pray, it's like this. You're holding on to something. And then you give, your, you give part of it to God. But you keep on holding on. You're not surrendering. You're holding on. So napapagod ka, nangangawit, di ba? But... You just leave everything in God's hands. And then you, then you will experience God's peace. That's what he wants. Remember who you are in Christ. If you are a believer, then we are a child of God. We are children of God. We are loved by God. And he will answer our prayers, take note, according to his will. So whether it's a yes or no or a wait, remember it's for our good. And I will just have to trust in the God who loved me, 
who gave his one and only son for me. And then remembering how God has helped you in the past also helps God's faithfulness. Remember it. Like whenever you're anxious, like, Lord, what about our future? Our savings are already depleted. Um, am I, are we going to survive? Remember how God has helped you in the past? He will continue to help us. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13 said, he won't give us any problems that we cannot carry or we cannot handle. Trials are only temporary. Remember our home, our eternal home is heaven. Let's say you, can, uh, you live up to 100 years old in this world. You're still going to die. All of us are still going to die. But heaven is a place wherein there's no more pain, no more tears, no more problem. And we will be with God forever. So let's on that, okay? Like I look at this. This is a journal. It says in Psalm 34 verse 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me, he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. So my second point is change your thinking pattern. Change the way you think. And that has been commanded in the Bible, Romans 12 too. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And Philippians 4, 4 verse 8, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy, think about such things. So my friends, our thoughts are very important. That's why again and again, the scripture asks us to take control of our thoughts. What we have to uh, think about will be the truth of God's word. So whenever, let's say, a worry would come in into your mind, reject it. Or you screen it first. Let's say you're not sure. You screen. Is it true? Is it noble? Is it right? If it just causes you worry, then it's not. It causes you anxiety. So you just reject it. But once you reject that thought, your mind will be blank again or empty. And then sometimes the enemy would use those thoughts again to attack you. So what do you do? You combat those with the word of God, with the truth of God's word. So you, let's say a, a negative thought comes, like about fear, worries, then I'll just pray. And then I'll, after pray, I'll recite Bible verses. So then you will be able to counterattack those lies from the enemies, okay? And writing in your journal also helps. I have a journal. Actually, I've been a, a, a journaling since 1987. I have a lot of notebooks like this. And this notebook, okay, is from Moto Press, uh, Moto Press Room. You can buy it from them. It's very nice, okay? And here it says, okay, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Uh, set you free. And they have a lot of covers and it, you can also personalize it as a gift to your friends. So it's good to journal, write down your thoughts, your anxieties, and you can do this. This is one thing we uh, tell the counselees, whether it's depression or worry. You limit worrying to only 15 minutes a day. Ilimit mo na lang. Kasi some people, they really like to worry. <laughs> Parang, it's a habit. So, oh, okay, instead of worrying the whole day to the point that you cannot work, you cannot study, okay, limit it to 15 minutes. And then you can write down all your worries in a notebook. And then also later, I'm going to teach you how do you conquer this kind of negative thoughts. And avoid ruminating or mentally replaying past events like what if I should, my friends, we cannot change the past. The past is past. We cannot change it, sad to say. We really cannot. But what we can change is what? The present and then the future. That's what we can change. So stop obsessing over your mistakes. When you make a mistake, it's okay. Learn from it. For instance, okay, the next time around, I won't speak when I'm angry so I won't hurt people. It won't disrupt relationships. And another is please give people the benefit of the doubt and don't jump into a conclusion. Because sometimes some people are like this, like, oh, I think she's angry at me because when we had a Zoom meeting a while ago, when I said hi, she did, he or she did not say hi back. Then you just give them the benefit of the doubt. Like maybe that person didn't, uh, didn't hear you, didn't notice you, or that person didn't have time to respond. So just give people the benefit of the doubt. Do not just keep, hala, baka may kasalanan ako, galit na siya. Then you won't be able to go to sleep, okay? Then keep yourself busy enough. Take out enough. Not too, not too busy to the point you're workaholic, mas stress ka rin. Keep yourself busy enough so you won't overthink. Sometimes kasi some people, it's a vicious cycle. They overthink so they can't work. Some people naman, because they're not doing anything, so they keep on thinking. So busy, they also won't be able to do anything, okay? So keep yourself busy enough. Set realistic goals. Aim for excellence, not perfection. Because if you're not, uh, if you're gonna aim for per perfection, it's gonna cause a lot of stress on your part and worries. And remind yourself, 
it is okay to try and fail than not to try at all. Let's say right now it's pandemic. You want to try um, a new recipe. You want to sell. You want to cook. You want to bake something. But you're so afraid that baka pumalpak. O baka pagtawa na ako ng matao. It's okay. You just try. If it fails, then you try again until you succeed, okay, with God's help. Fail. F-A-I-L. You change the meaning. It means first attempt in learning. So you learn from the mistakes, then that's okay. Or else you'll be hounded by regrets or what ifs. And my friends, it's okay when we fail. Then the people who truly cares for us, they will support us. They would encourage us. But people who doesn't, who doesn't, care they really won't care they would just let's say uh, put you down but if they really don't care about us it's okay then we look for people who cares for us if you fail remember you are not a failure as a person you only fail in a certain task so do not label yourself failure loser diba parang ganun tayo loser no you don't call yourself that we are victors in christ so do not always have the victim mentality that's wrong we are victorious in christ and think of possible solutions. For instance, you're afraid that you're gonna fail. Did you study hard? You're afraid that uh, you'll lose your job. Then work harder and smarter. You're afraid that uh, you might um, not have enough uh, for this for your family, this pandemic. Then you cut down on expenses so that we could have extra savings. Or if you have a business and right now it's not doing good because you're in, uh, in your business, people should come to you. Then you market your products online. You have to change the way you do marketing. And then uh, let's say uh, you're afraid, let's say for me, I'm afraid that I'm going to blunder this talk. So I have to practice. I have to prepare. Listen, and then let's say it's your, oh, you're about to make your first call, first date. And you're afraid that, oh, I might not uh, be very uh, lively or I, won't, I don't know what to say. Then you list some possible topics. You can put it down in your cell phone. And you say, oh, I'm afraid that when my children grow up, when they're teenagers, already young adults, they might be pasaway. They might go the wrong way. Then right now, what's within your control? Don't worry. You just pray and then teach them godly values now. Okay? And if you're afraid that you might get cancer or stroke, live a healthy lifestyle. And if you're afraid that you might catch the coronavirus, of course, we wear masks, we wash hands, and as much as possible, we don't go out. Okay? Think of possible solutions. And this girl is somebody I really admire. She's from UECP. I've known her uh, when I was still there. She's Chanel Oui. You look at the, right, uh, the left side picture, sad to say, she's now only in her 20s, but there's a problem. She got an uh, immunodeficiency uh, problem, so she needs a kidney transplant. So thank God they were able to raise funds. UECP helped them raise funds, and she was about to have a kidney transplant. The problem came, the pandemic. So patay. So with, even though uh, her friend is willing to give her the kidney, they cannot undergo the operation. It's too dangerous, okay, to go in the hospital not right now. She's very weak. So because of that, she needs to undergo dialysis again for three to four times a week. And they came from a middle-class family. Uh, her testimony is um, can be publicly shared. I've shared it in one of my videos. And she, instead of, she said, of course, she started by worrying. She got a little depressed during that time because it seems that God opened the door and that God closed the door. But she said, we have to think of ways because she's the eldest. Her dad already died when she was young. And then her mom is already um, uh, going in her 60s, 60s. Okay, so medyo papuntang senior citizen, na, late 50s na. And then she has a younger sister who's still studying. So where would they get the money? So she thought of a possible solution. Somebody offered her, do you want to sell dim sum? So she's now selling dim sum. You can take a picture of this. There's a number. Don't. I don't take any commission, so you just order from her and to help her. So if you notice in the uh, in the poster, it says door-to-door uh, -door dim sum, then her number, globe number, fundraising for dialysis and kidney transplant. So she did not commit suicide because she doesn't have the money. She, she just looked for a solution, okay? And then there are some things that you can uh, learn how to prevent. Or think of how you can prevent it in case it happens and what you're going to do. Sample. Some people are so afraid that oh, I don't want to go out because I might be robbed. Then these are the precautionary measures you can do. Don't use your cell phone in public. Put your money in different places. Para pag nanakaroon ka, napikpaket ka, you still have some money. Or you put your backpack in front if you're walking, if you're commuting. And be mindful of the surrounding. And worst comes to worst, if there's a gun pointed at you or a knife, just give it to them. So you don't need to be afraid, okay? 
Next, what about fire? I, some people are so friendly about fire. Then you also same, precautionary measures. Check out the outlets, don't charge your cell phone when sleeping. Then in case there's really a fire, then you shout so that to wake up all the family members. Mag-isip ka na, or, or early on when we were young, my mom would taught, teach us, if there is a fire, this is what you do. Get a towel, drench it with water, cover your face, then run out. Don't get anything na. Oh, yun. And of course, if there's an earthquake, we now have earthquake drills, back cover hold. Yung mga ganun, so no need to worry. And my uh, third, uh, next point would be, talk to people you trust. Like in this uh, picture, it's my friends. Like the first one, it's my, my college friend, Marilyn. And my, um, the other picture are my high school friends. Up to now, we keep in touch. And of course, I have also church friends. Uh, they are all Christians now. And I have all church friends, whether in UCP, Jerusalem, MGC. So it's good to have friends that you trust and can open up to whenever you're anxious, you're angry, you're depressed. And if you are very privileged, if you have very close family members or relatives that you can talk to, your small group members, I know that um, in UECG, you also have small groups, or you have a mentor, a counselor, a pastor, then ask them to pray for you whenever you're anxious, whenever you're depressed, okay? Next, do things that relaxes you, like breathing exercises. My friend, when you're, remember when you're about to have a panic attack, you do this, you breathe. You breathe deeply, inhale, count four seconds, and then exhale for another four seconds. You do this several times. My friends, it would um, calm your body down. So instead of the, your heart is palpitating, you're shaking, it would calm you down, okay? And you try to um, imagine, let's say the lake, wow, so peaceful. You think of a picture that would instantly relax you, and then you start breathing. And of course, as you breathe and count, you can also pray. Next, uh, take note here, all suggestions, because it works for differently for each one. We have different likes and dislikes. Some people, wow, it relaxes them when they bake or they cook. For me, it's very stressful for me to cook because I'm not a good cook. So I just eat comfort food like chocolate or ice cream. Of course, they're junk food, so you cannot eat too much of that. Okay, but it relaxes me. Or some people, oh, they just sleep. And after they wake up, oh, they're already okay. Some people, they surf the net, they play computer games, so that's okay. But please do not get addicted. It should not uh, take too much time that you such that you won't be able to study hard or work hard. So balance is the key. Next would be playing board games with your family members, playing with pets, exercising, engaging in sports. Exercising actually would help, especially if you're very stressed, where you're, you're anxious, you're depressed, it, it helps. So you also engage in sports. And look at what funny videos or inspiring ones. Look at this. Mom, we need haircuts. So sabi niya, I'm dad. <laughs> diba, nakakatawa? Or look at this next picture, the Mona Lisa. At first, oh, Mona Lisa, beautiful. Then she's holding a lot of toilet paper. Then you would see her with a mask, with gloves. And then after four months, okay, okay, I'm going crazy. That was okay, not already. Since I'm not going out, I don't need to comb my hair. So, and, and the last one, okay, after eating too much, she gained too much weight. So sometimes, okay, memes like this would... Okay, make us smile, make us laugh. It's okay. It relaxes us. That's okay. Or, of course, if you could watch inspiring videos, uh, listen to a lot of um, uh, preaching right now because of the online, there's so many uh, things that we could access, even uh, preachers from abroad, okay, like uh, John Piper, Tim Keller. There's so much, okay? And other things like watching Netflix videos, YouTube videos, to just to relax. Again, of course, Balance is the key. Do not watch too much K-drama to the point that you don't sleep anymore. Singing, listening to music, like Christian music, it really relaxes. Some people listen to nature, okay? Photography would also help people. Calligraphy, reading a book, gardening. That's why right now we have a lot of plantitos, plantitas, di ba? So when you look at your plant, oh, it relaxes you. You water them, you're happy. Another is, my last point is you focus on helping others because the tendency when we uh, focus too much on ourselves, we uh, tend to be anxious, we tend to be depressed. But when you look at other people that they ha they're in a more uh, pitiful situation than we are, you focus on helping them, mawawala yung anxiety mo sa depression. Sa totoo lang. It really helps. Like, um, let me show you this picture. Okay? The the one that says, Jesus is our greatest hope. These are my friends from CCF. They're my Chiang Kai-shek friends, Lincoln and Tina and their family. You know, their kids, they're so proactive. They could just be depressed or just play around, bum around. But no, during this time, because of the Typhoon Ulysses, they, and they're already selling brownies or egg tarts I've also brought from them. And they said, 
for this time, they're going to sell brownies for a cost. All, take note that 100% of the profits, they're going to donate it to the typhoon victims. And then in the middle picture, that's Francis and Anne Kadpangan. They're from MGC. They're, they're just lay believers. They're not even pastors. But she said, I want to help. So they raised funds among her friends. And they also donated relief goods to um, the people in Rizal, okay, uh, those who have been devastated by the flood in Marikina. And then the last picture, must be Libka. That's uh, the guy is Kuya Richard, the, UE, the driver in UECB for 11 years. Wow. That's why I'm going to feature him in my uh, upcoming video. Nakakatouch because they're my friends in Facebook. So I'm updated. So I would see, oh, and then I called him, Kuya Richard, who started this uh, fund drive? He said, me. Kuya Richard is already a Christian. He's still with UECB, pero meron siyang sideline. He's now a joyride um, biker. So they said together with other bikers, they raised funds and they gave relief goods to people, not only for the Typhoon Ulysses victims, but also to the people in Taal uh, during the Taal volcano quake. They gave to the street people. Take note, they're drivers. They're not even rich. They have, I'm sure, just enough, but they have a big heart. So you can't, uh, we can't say that, oh, I'm not rich. No, these people, they came from different status levels, but they're all willing to help. And look at all of them. They're all smiling. None of them is depressed. None of them is anxious because they found the joy of helping others, okay? And I'd like to share this story for the older people in case you have some older people in your church. This is also a Christian, Frederick William Smith. He is already 90 years old. Wow. He lives in UK. He was able to raise 5,500 British pounds. That's around 350,000 pesos for charity funds for his local Anglican church in France. And you know what he just he did? He would just walk around his house. And then he asked people to donate money for every round, okay? From June 1 to July 5, he was able to walk 100 meters every day. That's a total of nine kilometers. Wow. It's not easy for him. Number one, he's already old. 90 years old, my friends. He would just be bombing around, okay, watching TV the whole day long. But he did not. And his toe just got amputated a few, few weeks before he started walking. So masakit. And his wife, Marilyn, probably because uh, she's not, uh, not that healthy, she only accompanied him during the finish line. And their church is very mission-oriented. They helped restore a church in where? Madagascar, where it's, the church has been destroyed by the storm. It's a center to shelter and feed local people. And they also give funds to, pe to a private Christian school in Pakistan. And also they support um, refugees in Strasbourg. So they, you, you can do a lot of things, okay? We just have to be creative on how you're going to do it. On my part, um, I started this a YouTube channel. It's not only to reach out to the Christians, but also to the uh, unbelievers. That's why I don't use my uh, title as a pastor. I'm using my uh, title as a doctor because I want to reach out to the non-Christians. So let's say if there's a three self-care tips to manage stress, only one is directly related to the Bible or to God. The others are very practical tips. But my goal is that as they keep on watching these videos, I would keep on planting the seeds until one day they would also come to know Jesus. Okay, so I've talked about this like I, I have uh, every week there's one in English, one in Amoy, but once a month I try to do it in Taglish. Of course, my Taglish is not that good. Okay, so in conclusion, I wanted to take a screenshot of this. This is the um, poster of the National Center for Mental Health. Please take a picture. There is a crisis hotline, 0917-899-8727. This is 24-7. It means that anybody can call. Of course, it's, uh, it's not a Christian one, but it's better than not being, being able to talk to someone. Uh, you can also check out the 700 Club um, prayer line. Um, but I, when I check it, the line that I got uh, wasn't working, so I, I can't post it now. So I checked, but this one, I really called and somebody answered and I asked, 24 seven ba talaga? They said yes, okay? So in case somebody, let's say you woke up in the middle of the night or you can't sleep, call them up, talk to someone. And let's say, yeah, you tried all of the steps I've shared and you're still anxious, you're still palpitating, you cannot work, you cannot sleep. And you really cannot sleep already for several weeks. That's not good. Please consult a psychiatrist. Why? Um, you might need to take medication because of the neurochemical imbalance in your brain. Of course, the if you ask me, that's the last resort. The first would be um, the, the tips that I've shared. 
and then or let's say you talk to a professional like me, a counselor like me, and let's say after talking to me, you still want to um, consult a psychiatrist, then go ahead. But I'm already telling you that psychiatrists cost a lot of money and it's also the medicines are also very expensive. And of course, we don't want you to um, depend on the medicine. So if you can, if you can overcome it with God's help, with the natural means, that's the best. But in case you really med need medication, please do not be ashamed to consult a psychiatrist because some people really have chemical imbalance in the brain. So as a run of the five, focus on God to overcome anxiety, change your thinking pattern, talk to someone you trust, do something that relaxes you and focus on helping others. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and let's go to Q&A. Thank you, Dr. Jeanette, Jeanette T. Let us um, move to our Q&A. So uh, if you have questions, feel free to type them on the chat box and the comment section of Facebook. And I will read them out uh, to our speaker, Jeanette T. Uh, Jeanette T, our first question here is this. How do you stop worrying about something that is moving closer and closer, like a schedule or a deadline? The, the person is asking, uh, is saying, I'm afraid of college because I still don't know what I want to study. I can't ignore it because it's a reality I think I have to prepare, prepare for, but sometimes the worry can be crippling. Okay. So again, think of possible solutions. Okay, after praying, uh, after praying, um, how would you know what course? Then you have to decide, okay, what course will be suitable for me? Like there will be uh, tips like, where, what subjects are you good at? What skills do you have? Okay, and what you can do, let's say there are some courses that interest you, you can also uh, call up people who are taking this course or people who are working in certain jobs that you are interested in, you interview them so that you would know, do I really like what they're doing? And then you also ask them, what does it entail to be a nurse? Okay, do you need to, uh, let's say it's how many years, mahirap ba, a lot of memorization, whatever. And then you look at your skills. Let's say for me, when I was about to un uh, uh, go to college, actually, I'm not, a, I'm not supposed to take psychology. I'm supposed to, I really took the test for mass communication because I'm a little bit of I'm very chatty. So I really took up mass com and BS biology, only two courses. It's a good thing before I entered college, somebody counseled me. So go to a counselor. Uh, that person asked me, are you sure that you want to take up biology? Uh, I said, the only reason why I want to take up BS biology is I want to help people. I want to be become a medical missionary or to give um, medical services for free. That's my heart. And then he asked me one thing. Kaya mo ba? Can your parents afford it? Because he knows that I came from a middle class family. It's a good thing he asked me. That's a very practical question. So I asked my parents, uh, can we afford it? You know what my parents said? Yeah. Uh, Boshura, it's not sure. Okay, let's see. Sabi ko, patay. And take note, my parents are not Christians. If eventually after supporting me and I'm gonna give everything for free, they're gonna kill me. <laughs> but take, thank God they're now Christians. But that's how, and that's, that's why I eventually low, um, narrowed down to Mascom. Mascom, but God had a different plan. When I entered Saints Co, it's the first year, and the, during the first week, there's orientation, right? So, and then the first, uh, my name was one of those picked to start uh, to join their honors class. Yung pala is their first time to uh, come up with a double major, but you graduate in three years. And the courses are psychology and HRD, human resources developed. So I thank God for um, redirecting me. That's why I was able to use it now, okay, in this time. I would have, in my batch, nobody took psychology. So prayer, and then um, you can ask around and you can research because right now, because of Google, it's so easy to research and you can ask. Let's say you can ask me privately, then I can give you some tips. And actually most schools, they give you career tests. What's career tests? Uh, based on your IQ, your aptitude, your uh, interest, your personality, they will tell you what are the clusters of uh, courses na bagay sayo. Okay, so you can go to your counselor. Usually it's given during your uh, third year, third year high school school before you go to fourth year. So you can ask your school. They have this test. Thank you, Dr. Cho. Um, I have another question here. Um, 
if I'm anxious, does it mean I that my faith in God is weak or am I being disobedient to the Lord? No, because even as Christians, it's normal to have this kind of feelings like sometimes we feel anxious, sometimes we get depressed. Uh, take note, what I'm talking about, when I say depressed, it's not clinical depression. Huh? We also get depressed, okay? It's normal. I'm going to give you one classic example. Read 1 Kings 19. Who got depressed? Who got so down that he wanted to die? Elijah, the great prophet of God. So when you get anxious, you get depressed. I, I, what's, if you ask me, um, what happened next is very, very comforting. Because when Elijah said that, Lord, hindi ko nakaya, just take me. Take note, he did not attempt suicide. He just got burned out. But you know, God did not rebuke him. God did not condemn him. He said, you're a great prophet. How come you don't have enough faith in me? No, God just let him sleep because he was already physically drained. After the day before, uh, the day before he battled with 850 false prophets, he won. But upon hearing that Queen Jezebel wanted to kill him, he ran away and he wanted to die. So that, that's already a sign of burnout. But God did not rebuke him. God allowed him to sleep. And then God asked an angel to wake him up and then feed him. And then he's so tired, he slept again. And God, again, asked an angel to wake him up and feed him again. So sometimes when we're very, very tired, burned out, depressed, or you're feeling that sad, it's time for us to take a break, okay, before we break. Take a break, relax first, and then draw strength again from God. So if you're anxious, it's normal, but we have to learn how to overcome it. Because if we're the type of Christians who's always anxious, um, how can we show that we are joyful? How can we show the fruit of the Holy Spirit that we have peace? Hindi makikita. So what's our difference? Sometimes, you know what? The things, okay, that the way we reflect God in our lives, it attracts people. Like during this time of pandemic, if people can see that you have that kind of peace, that kind of joy, that trust, that steadfast faith in God, it attracts them. Thank you. And here's another one. How can you differentiate anxiety from depression? Okay. Um, actually, uh, medyo pareho, but in terms of anxiety, like uh, the symptoms, like the palpitation, the panic attacks, a depressed person won't have that. A depressed person rather would uh, sometimes would exhibit dramatic change in personality. Let's say, I, let's say ako, I'm a very extroverted person. Suddenly, I don't want to talk with anyone. I don't want to go out. Okay. And let's say, uh, um, I don't even comb my hair. I don't even want to brush my teeth. You sobrang, sobrang drastic change in personality, in hy hygiene habits. Um, that's already a sign of depression. Or the kind wherein that person has no will to live. That person would just say, I really want to die. Nobody loves me. So people who are depressed tendency, they feel helpless. They feel that the situation is so hard the circumstances so bleak that they can't go on there's no light at the end of the tunnel for them they feel nobody loves them they feel so alone and they feel hopeless okay that's why i hope that for us believers whenever we feel that way we again draw strength from god and again connect with believers remember the one i told you about elijah elijah told god god spoke to him afterwards at mount horeb they talk that means we draw strength from god through the bible through praying and then God told him, because he said, I'm the only one left. God said, no. There are 7,000 people who did not bow down to Baal and the false prophets. The problem is, Elijah didn't know. Probably he was too busy in the ministry. He didn't connect with believers. That's why it's very important that we have Zoom meetings like this. Uh, you have your own small group. Because even we don't meet up in person or maybe one one-on-one -on, -one on the phone. It helps. It encourages one another. And lastly, you know what God did to Elijah? Elijah? God gave him a new mission. For people who are depressed, you have to give them a mission, a purpose to live. God told Elijah, go and anoint as a hell, as so-and-so. You go anoint somebody as a king of... So there should be a, a, a purpose. Let's say, for instance, I visit an old, uh, an uncle or an ama, a grandma or granddad. And they would, you know, sometimes when they're very old and they're sick, they said, ah, oh, I'm gonna die, I wanna die. And then I would give them hope. How? I said, no, auntie, diba, you said you still want to see your grandchild get married. Or, diba, let's say for my mom, when she's 
Then my mom also would also make dramas like that. Oh, I want to die. Oh, this is so painful. <laughs> sakit, sakit. Everything's painful. She want to die na daw. But I would say, because I know my mom loves to travel. I said, Ma, di na siki ko na bo, eh, ni boha ng tsut ko. If you die, we can't go abroad next year. Uh -huh. She said, no, I'm just alive again. She, because she wants to go abroad. Yun. So that's our promise. Once this pandemic is over, we're going to uh, give her another free trip, trip, trip abroad. Something like that. So that's the difference between depression and anxiety. Thank you. And we have uh, now a question from Facebook. Um, this must mm. be coming from a, a person with medical background. Uh, what do you think mm. of acupuncture and anxiety? Acupuncture is shown to increase serotonin, dopamine, and other feel-good neurotransmitters. I also have a few patients with anxiety that I treat with acupuncture and dietary modifications. Okay. Actually, um, dietary modification that also helps. Like when you're anxious, please do not take more caffeine because or alcohol. That's good. Not uh, that's not good. Let's say they would say, okay, if it's tea, it should be chamomile to calm you down. There are fruits and uh, food that would calm you down. Acupuncture, I'm okay with it because. If you ask me, that's also a gift from God. The Chinese medicine, of course. If you're a Western medicine, you won't agree, okay? But for me, uh, then you just take the, you just uh, take the best of both worlds. I can give it a try. Let's say if I'm not afraid of needle, I can give it a try and see if it helps me. But um, for some people, let's say for me, uh, I'm afraid of needles. It's sorry, na lang, doc. It won't. Uh, I, I won't go to you for acupuncture or anybody because I'm afraid of needles. But for some people, it works for them. So I'm okay with that. Thank you. Um, here's another question. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, if uh, somebody's not been sleeping uh, well for many weeks, he should uh, he or she should seek uh, professional help. This, this question is uh, uh, somewhat related to that. How long or how severe for a person to stay anxious before parents or family should seek professional help? Are there indicators that we should watch out for? Okay, that's a hard question. Um, if you ask me, let's say if it's already, um, let's say that person hasn't been sleeping well, um, but you can see because sometimes I say I can't sleep well at night, but bumabawi ako in the afternoon, eh. so they get to know, I still get enough hours of sleep. So technically, I still don't need to go to a psychiatrist at that point. Um, but I always say the first line of defense, of course, would be um, that person. That person would have the will, the desire to improve the situation. And then the support of the family and friends help a lot. And of course, the church. And after that, the next step, let's say, hindi pa rin gumana, then you go to a professional, let's say, counselor muna. Kasi may level siya, eh, counselors, okay? Like school counselors, pwede, ako pwede. And then the next step would be the psychologist. And then the last, okay, would be the psychiatrist. Because what's the difference between the psychiatrist and me? Yeah, both of us have a doctorate degree, but my doctorate degree is in counseling. It's in marriage and family counseling. I cannot prescribe medicine. Only a medical doctor can do that. So let's say if that person comes to me and he really needs, uh, let's say, uh, a prescription for a sleeping pill or whatever, or anti-anxiety drug, antidepressant, I cannot. So I would have to refer that person to a psychiatrist. So for me, um, I think the family should be more observant uh, and see if, it, for me, if it hampers their daily lifestyle. Let's say, uh, like, I can no longer study. I cannot no longer concentrate. I can no longer um, go to school. And if I'm already um, self-harming, please be aware that right now, a lot of people, especially teenagers, are harming themselves. What is self-harming? Like, they would cut themselves. But normally, it's not in places like this. Nakikita to, it's so obvious. Like, I have to wear long sleeve. Like, I've, I have cases like that where they will wear long sleeve the whole day long. But if it's summer, it's crazy, right? You, people would notice that there's something wrong. So no, normally, they would say, okay, then they would put it up and show me it's inside. They would show me the cuts. And I would say, why would you cut yourself? You know what they would say? Because the emotional pain is too much to bear. So that's why, if they, let's say they cut themselves here. If they cut themselves here temporarily, the focus will not be on the emotional pain, but on the physical pain. But the problem is this. The physical pain, gagaling yan eh. So afterwards, if they don't deal with the problem, the root of the problem, they would have to still keep on cutting. So please, you have to observe if, um, so not only self-harming, there's a lot of ways like cutting. Some people burn themselves with cigarette butts, whatever. 
some people would pull their hair. So if you suddenly notice that one of your child, like there's a, a bald spot here, it's either their stress or they're already harming themselves by pulling their hair. Some people, okay, would bang them their, their heads on the wall. So they talaga makita mo iba bukol or bang themselves in the mirror. So talaga makita mo may mga gash na yan. So this immediately you have to seek uh, a counselor or a psychiatrist. Kasi they're already harming themselves. We don't want them to end up dying. Okay? Kasi papunta na siyang suicide. Yun, yun na nakakatakot. Okay. There's another si similar question. Um, hindi pa naman physical harm tong pinag, uh, tinatanong niya. But the question is, what to do or say when a teenager say, I want to die now? Kung maga, sinasabi pa lang, my life is boring. What are the symptoms we can look for to consider it a serious concern? I mean, uh, okay. sinasabi pa lang yata. Okay, good. Pag sinasabi pa lang, for me, that's still a good sign. Because nag sinasabi niya, that means that person trusts you. So who, uh, let's say, uh, kayo, kayo ang kausap. Remember when people have problems, they won't automatically go to a counselor, to a pastor. They usually go to their friends or close family members. So kayo yun. And here are some tips. When somebody starts opening up like, I want to kill myself or I want to die, uh, so boring, please do not sermon, okay? Do not reprimand. Do not say, huh, you're already so blessed. We already have this big house. Uh, no, that person already opened up. Let's listen, okay? Then you can ask why. Okay, why did you say that? You, you, you draw that person out. There should be reasons eh? like, uh, okay, why do you feel that way? Because maybe something happened. Something happened in, in their school, in, among her, that their friends, baka nag-away sila. Alam mo naman, when you are a teenager, uh, friends are very important. So when the, somebody hurt them or let's say uh, they had a fight, they already don't, don't want to leave. Or, syempre, lano yung mga in love na. Oh, tapos yung crush na, hindi siya crush. Iba na yung crush. Or mag, mag-break up na sila. So these things for some young people, they cannot take it. They already want to die. So ang problema ko, I don't know what's the problem, right? So you have to ask, like, why do you say that, Anna? Or, or kunyari, 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 your friend. And please, okay, I, I actually, I made a video on this. You can check that out. Like, it means, um, how do you make somebody special by validating their feelings? Like, I, I gave some tips on, like, how do you listen attentively? Like, you look at them in the eye, okay? You listen, you react appropriately. Let's say, yeah, parents. You're a parent. And then your 12-year-old comes. To you. Oh, daddy, mommy, I'm so happy. My crush said, ako yung crush niya. Tapos magagalit. Ano crush, crush? 12 years old ka lang, ah. Grade 6 ka lang, oh, sa sermonan mo. Next time, the, your son or daughter won't open up na. But you can use that as a teaching moment. Let's say, ah, your, uh, that open up. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ganda-ganda kasi na anak ko. Gwapo-gwapo. Pero anak ka, wag mo ka muna ka boyfriend kasi you're still young or magka-girlfriend. Uh, you wait until blank. Depends on the age that you want your uh, children to have Let's say, uh, when parents ask me or the teenagers, they would say, um, I would say now, at least 18. Okay, if they can wait, at least 18. At least 18, they're already in college, they're more mature. Of course, if they can wait until college, that's the best, but uh, some they cannot. Eh. So for me, at least 18, better than elementary. <laughs> so listen uh, and draw that person out. And uh, I would also like to tell all of you, you can research right now for the millennials, the Gen Z, they have what you call the quarter life crisis they have a crisis at the age of 25 my friends pag kami right now ako i'm already nearing 50 ang nagkakaroon na kami ng menopausal syndrome midlife crisis aba ngayon now because it's a whole new world they now have a quarter life crisis at the age of 25 they already feel bored they don't know where they're gonna go yo that's where we come in that's where we how we guide them so find out what's the What's really the problem? And I hope that they will open up to you. And of course, take note, always draw them back to God because God will be for them 24-7. Tayo hindi. I mean, the parents, yeah, but we're, as, we're not always there eh, physically. But God is. And God can always be there for them. Does, does this hold uh, also for, you know, when talking to peers or friends with the same age? Uh, because there's a question here that says, uh, how can I hold a better conversation with friends naman who are experiencing clinical depression and, and anxiety disorder? Ah, okay. Yeah, it holds true. It 
actually a lot of people they need friends they need people to listen to them take note without judging okay without judging them without saying huh you went to psychiatrist baka do shawo no you don't say that okay that's why right now uh, we're trying to uh, minimize the stigma of people going to psychiatrists or going even to a counselor like us some people don't go, want to go to a counselor like me because people might tease me and say oh baka ile shawo she's crazy or what no Sometimes is they just need somebody to talk to, somebody to validate their feelings. They're just sad, they're hurt, whatever, or they just need guidance. Like you, Karina, the questions about college. So uh, we want to take away that stigma. So as a friend, when your friend, let's say your friend is already clinically depressed, um, they're already taking medicine. It helps them because medicine, yeah, it helps a little. It helps in one hand, but they also need to learn how to process their thoughts. They also need to feel love. They feel accept, and that's where the friends come in. You let them feel love. You let them feel that they're not alone. That when they have a problem, they can call up on you anytime. Ayon. So as a friend, you play a very important role. Okay, thank you. Uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, you know you're writing a journal. There's a question here that says, "How do you start journalizing?" Uh, okay, a uh, very simple. Just. For me, I'm very simple. Like, uh, but you can't understand my handwriting. Okay, it's very simple. I, for me, I just write the date, the time, and then I just write my feelings. Okay, like for this, I said, Lord, thank you for a good night rest, the coffee bond, the sunny weather. That was I'm touched that blah blah blah. That was I also write the I I, I read my Bible, my devotion ako. So I wrote Zechariah six five. Okay, sabi ko like the ganito ganito. So. It could be some, and then sometimes when I'm really angry at somebody or sad, I also write out, "Lord, I'm angry." Let's say I had a fight with Hans. Okay, my my husband, <sighs> I'm angry. Hans, cha 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 cha, sumbu ko kay God. <laughs> and after I feel better, <laughs> and after that, simply if I feel better, just na realize ko, ay ako pa may mali. Di ako magso sorry. <laughs> Di ako yung may mali, di ba? So that helps. And of course, it also helps. Um, uh, when you're, uh, but oh, please, my friends. Keep your journal in a safe place, because sometimes it's. Some people tell me that they're traumatized when they found out that somebody read their journal or somebody posted it in Facebook or whatever. Please, uh, for the parents um, who are here, uh, it depends on your children's age. But there comes a certain age that I hope you would be able to respect their privacy. Like uh, you can just ask if you are in doubt. Okay, you can ask nicely. Like um, I'm worried about you, honey. Um, can you? Um, Tell me what's going on instead of just uh, let's say um, you check out their journals or what because sometimes they would also feel violated. Of course, unless you side the anak mo, ah. if really suicidal, then um, if you intervene, nobody would blame you. But if it's just normal things like crash, crash, uh, somebody courting, you just ask them, and hopefully they would. You guys have a close relationship to the point that they would open up. Then you tell them like uh, when I was younger, even though my parents are very strict. My parents said I can only have a boyfriend when I graduated from college. Tapos hindi lang yun. My parents told me that if somebody would court you, I want that guy to come to our house. Gusto nila makilala because they said that if that per that guy is only after the say sex, then he won't have the guts to meet us because if something happens to you, we know who to look for. Something like that. So it will be good uh, if you have teenagers. You have to start talking to them about. Um, Keeping themselves sexually pure before marriage, uh, opening up about, let's say, mental health issues, depression, anxiety, because when you, um, if they can openly talk to you, then that's already a big help. Thank you. We just have a couple of questions left, so here's one. Um, I've not been sleeping well because I'm worried about my job. Or business, what can I do? And if I sleep and wake up, I can't sleep anymore. What can I do to stop worrying? Okay. Um, first, siguro yung sleeping pattern. Actually, di ba? Like uh, Doc Willie Ong would have a good video on that about sleeping pattern. Like here are some tips. And actually, a lot of books would also write about it. Like sleep at the same time. And then before you sleep, probably an hour or thirty minutes before, do not look at your cell phone, do not look at the laptop, kasi nga because of the light emitting, it makes you wide awake. Tapos, um, some people it helps them if you really need to, uh, you can just buy it over um, GNC, kasi it's a supplement, melatonin. Okay, melatonin is not a prescriptive um, sleeping pill, so you can drink that. But of course, other things can help calm you down. Okay, 
Tapos for me, you also keep yourself busy throughout the day. Kasi pag pagod ka na, it's very natural for us to pagbagsak mga I've got to sleep na. But ang tanong pa niya is worrying about the job or the business. I already gave you some tips a while ago. Like if it's yes. the job, then you have to think um, like in uh, what aspect are you worried about? Like for instance, I might lose my job because uh, right now they're laying off people because of uh, their cost cutting. So let's say uh, that's the problem. Then for me, I want to uh, be one of their best employees. Because if I'm one of the best employees, even if I'm highly paid, they're not going to let me go. Because I generate output. I give value to the company. Let's say it's a business. Uh, when it comes to business, then you have to um, sit down, you pray, have wisdom, maybe talk to some people. Sometimes you just have to cut your losses. Let's say uh, you have to project, if I keep on opening this business and I'm, we're going to lose millions, I would rather cut our losses. Look at Jollibee. Jollibee closed 300 plus stores. And Jollibee is already a very big company, but they're willing to cut their losses. So for me, it will depend. Because for me, naman, let's say, what if it's um, a business started by your grandparents? Siyempre, nakakahinayang, di ba? It's a legacy. But for me, if I close it now, I cut down my losses, I paid all the debts, okay? And then I try to look for a job that can generate more income. And if in the future, after the pandemic, I can always start another business. And you never know, sometimes when God closes a door, remember, he, o- he always opens a better one. Uh, at this point, I have one last question here. Unless there's, uh, um, there's pahabol. Um, if anxiety is a sin, how should we as Christians respond to it and overcome it? Okay, um, it's hard to say if it's a sin or not, okay, but it's a command that we should not be anxious. Um, so how to overcome it? Again, remember, we draw strength from God, we look to God, we read the Bible, we memorize Bible verses on anxiety, para automatic, let's say, yeah. sometimes, because it hits you when you don't expect it. Let's say suddenly I'm afraid again, then I would just pray. Pray and then I'll memorize. I've already memorized Psalm 56 verse 3. Very short. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. Psalm 56 verse 3. Okay. Or First Peter 5, 7. You can eat. I already memorized it. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for me. So I would just say, Lord, you already care for me. You will take good care of me. I don't need to worry. Okay. Of course, I have to do my part. Parang sabi nga nila, di ba? When you pray, you pray as if everything depended on God. But when you work or when you study, you do it as if everything depends on you. You we do our part, let leave the results to God. Okay? Good. Thank you. Well, that's all the time that we have for the QA. Thank you very much, Dr. Jeanette T. And now before we do our closing prayer, um, we will have some announcements. So I have BJ. Hey, brothers and sisters and friends, CUECG is here to guide and care for our members and attendees. If anyone feels that they want to join a fellowship group, care group, or small group, we have several options for you. Uh, Please uh, uh, direct your attention to the screen shared by Anya BJ. So we have youth fellowship on Saturdays at 8 p.m. We have youth pro, a young pro fellowship every second and fourth Saturdays at 8 p.m. as well. Parenting group, second and fourth Saturdays from 4 to 6 p.m. Prayer meeting, Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Small groups, uh, we have uh, various small groups with various schedules. Uh, There are couples groups, men's, women's, youth groups, young pro Bible study groups as well. So uh, if uh, you don't have a group yet and you feel that uh, God is urging you to join any of this, you can contact UECG through the following numbers here. Uh, Brother Benjamin Tan, uh, his uh, number is here, 0917-880-9168. And you can email him at bench 
tan9 at gmail.com. Okay. We have another announcement. Um, we are inviting everyone to join our online service SES, uh, which will premiere at 9 p.m. Uh, 9, I'm sorry, 9.15 a.m. every Sunday and, and it's available in both uh, English and Chinese language. So um, you can subscribe to the UECG YouTube channel, just search UECG and uh, I think it's also broadcast in Facebook. Okay. And if you wish to talk to somebody and if you have any more uh, questions that you want to ask, you can send any inquiry or prayer requests at the following email address, uecgonline at gmail.com, or you can call or text 0995-445-1069. All our uh, pastors and our uh, our staff will be ready to assist you. Uh, at this point, uh, may I request uh, um, Mike Boksu, Reverend Mike Lim, to close us in prayer. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Jeanette, for that talk. I trust that many were blessed by that talk. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, our God, tonight, once again, we were reminded that you are immovable God. You are our rock, Lord, that when we have troubles, anxieties, we can always come to you. And unlike our human friends, unlike uh, this world systems, Lord God, you are available 24-7. And we want to say thank you. Father, I'd like to pray for our friends who are listening in tonight. Some of them may be anxious about many things. And yes, we have to admit that oftentimes we feel out of control and that's because we are out of control but father god we just want to be reminded again and again you are in control and you care so father for those who do feel anxious lord i pray that they will experience your arm around them they will be comforted. And Lord, for our families and friends who may be anxious, may we also come and journey with them and bring them the comfort that comes from you. Lord, bless each one, Lord, as we leave tonight. Help us, Lord, to be your light in this difficult world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.